Jeremy Quinn. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is as ever. This is ever a pleasure to follow uh, the honourable gentleman. As a uh, as a neoclassicist myself, I now know I need to keep an eye on my variables. Uh, I'm uh, I'm grateful to the honourable gentleman for his advice. Uh, as I say, it's a, it's a pleasure uh, to follow the honourable gentleman. It's uh, I hope you'll forgive me for saying it's an even greater pleasure for those of us on this side of the house to know that there is now an effective opposition in the Scottish Parliament, keeping an eye on yeah, his colleagues yeah. and what they're up to up north. I uh, listened to every word, not only of the honourable gentleman's speech, but of the honourable, of the right honourable uh, proposer, the shadow uh, chancellor. Uh, I don't know if the uh, if the shadow chancellor rehearses his speeches in front of his colleagues. Uh, if so, I don't know if he allowed himself a wry smile. Uh, when he quoted, I quote, that used the passage, uh, the need to replace old, worn-out infrastructure with something more effective. <laughs> Having read uh, Labour's uh, future, a very little uh, read book, uh, I can only imagine that the Shadow Chancellor's advisers, Messrs Fisher and Varoufakis, have got their work cut out in the years ahead. But I will, Madam Deputy Speaker, say some positive things, if I may. Oh, thank you. Uh, but I will. <laughs> one has to try. Uh, I would, though, in my remaining short period of time, uh, like to say a few positive things about this very positive, gracious speech. I serve on the Financial Inclusion Commission, an honour I share with the Honourable Gentleman, the Member for East Lothian. And I'm particularly interested in how this Government is setting out to improve financial inclusion and resilience. The scale of this problem highlighted by an excellent paper by the FCA and the Financial Inclusion Commission published earlier this week, as the Honourable Gentleman knows, is immense. The Government is taking positive steps. I welcome fee-free basic bank accounts, the lifetime ISA and the continuing successful rollout of auto-enrolment. I welcome, in particular, the Help to Save scheme. Up to three and a half million low-paid workers could benefit. Now, I do not for one second underestimate the difficulty for many families in saving £50 a month. But from my experience with credit unions, I know some do. And if they do it through this scheme, they'll be better off. <clears throat> they'll be better off to the tune of £1,200. I welcome this for its direct impact, but even more so, I welcome it for the culture that it could provide in terms of financial resilience. Curbs on the supply of payday lending will only get us so far. Any step that helps boost resilience and thereby reduces demand for those crippling services is to be welcomed. But our main focus must be to encourage resilience by promoting our national economic growth. And the gracious speech is imbued with policies that will enhance productivity. Establishing a legal right to broadband connections, as has been mentioned a number of times in this debate, will enhance our productivity and aid financial and social inclusion. The Government's commitment to transport is well-founded. The performance of Horsham's local rail operator, GTR, not helped by current industrial action, is woeful, but I recognise the Government's commitment to investment in this line. And on transport and productivity, the Davis Commission made an unequivocal recommendation for Heathrow. It said that Gatwick would deliver half the economic benefit, has insufficient transport connections, and would fail to provide the hub airport which Britain needs. For the sake of our national productivity, let's get on with expansion at Heathrow. Lastly, I welcome fair funding for schools, which will help the recruitment of maths and other STEM teachers in West Sussex, helping to drive future productivity and ensure we create a generation across the country better equipped to seize the opportunities that are being created by this Government and boost financial inclusion and resilience. Yeah. Yeah.